Welcome to MSB lecture series on the chemistry of main group elements. Uh, today I am going to discuss on group 18 elements. Of course, we have uh, about 6 elements in the series uh, starting from helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon. The valence shell electronic configuration is ns2 np6 that means octet is completed and in fact most of the elements in the periodic table which come left uh, in the groups have a tendency to have the electronic configurations of uh, noble gases and this we call it as octet uh, in case of uh, s and p block elements because all of them have a tendency to have S2 P6 or NS2 NP6 electronic configuration. Noble gases or inert gases have that electronic configuration and as a result they are very, very stable having very high ionization energy. So, uh, the noble gases have also been called as rare gases and as we know they are also called as inert gases. Of course, now none of the names it appears are particularly uh, suitable. With extensive chemistry, xenon is not inert and argon is almost 30 times more abundant than carbon dioxide in air. Try to know a little bit more about uh, this group 18 elements. The greater reactivity of xenon compounds compared to the other group 18 elements. Of course, only other uh, element that known to react is krypton. So, xenon shows greater reactivity and the stability of xenon compounds containing electronegative elements such as oxygen and fluorine. Uh, the reactivity of noble gas fluorides as fluoride, ion donors and acceptors. In fact, it is known that inert gases or group 18 elements possess extremely high ionization energy. As a result, initially it was assumed that they are not suitable for making chemical compounds. The first xenon compound was synthesized in 1962. Since then, the chemistry of xenon is quite extensive. A few compounds of krypton have also been reported. The chemistry of main group gas compounds are analogous to those of heavier group 17 elements. And VSEPR theory is a very powerful technique for rationalizing and predicting the shapes of many noble gas compounds which have relatively large number of electron pairs in the valence shell of the central atom. Noble gases have filled shells that is NS2 NP6 completely filled having 8 electrons. So, in order to form chemical compounds electrons must be promoted into the next shell. So, depending on the number of electrons promoted compounds of the noble gases in atom states uh, plus 2, plus 4, plus 6 and plus 8 have all been synthesized. Just if you recall the interhalogen compounds, group 17 elements show plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7 apart from minus 1 atom state whereas group 18 element shows plus 2, plus 4, plus 6 and plus 8. It is very simple if you just write the electronic configuration and just promote one electron at a time to the higher shell, okay, you uh, understand uh, why inert gases are group 18 element shows plus 2, plus 4 and plus 6 and plus 8 and so on. Whereas, interhalogen compounds or halogens show plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7. Okay, it, it's, it has to do with the electronic configuration that is the NS2 P5 and NS2 P6. With increase in atomic size, the outer electrons are easily removed and there is a decrease in first ionization energy. So, as a result, there are many xenon compounds, but a few for krypton and none have been isolated so far argon. Interhalogen compounds, uh, halides show minus 1, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7. Whereas, group 18 uh, gases show plus 2, plus 4, plus 6 and also plus 8 oxidation states. I will come back to this one later. All compounds tend to be strong oxidizing agents and the fluorides are also 
very powerful fluorinating agents. The formation of anionic noble gas compounds such as cesium neonide with electropositive metal is an intriguing possibility though none has yet been isolated. Of course, this was reported in Journal of Chemical Education in 1988. If you are curious to know the historical developments in noble gas chemistry, you can look into this article here. I have shown uh, both the Journal of Chemical Education as well as the Angu Chemi International Edition uh, paper in which you can look into the information if you are more curious to know about some of these ionic noble gas compounds and also the historic development in noble gas chemistry. So, all of the elements exist as highly unreactive monoatomic gases with very low boiling points. Argon is the most abundant comprising of 0.93 percent of the atmosphere, helium, neon and krypton and xenon are trace constants of air. All isotopes of radon are radioactive and are formed naturally from the decay of heavy radioisotopes such as those of radium and uranium. Noble gas cloth threads. In 1920s and 1930s, there was considerable interest in materials formed between noble gases, particularly those of argon, krypton and xenon and strongly hydrogen bonding compounds such as water and polyphenols. Uh, later it was shown that they are not actually chemical compounds, but they are inclusion compounds known as cloth rates where the gas atoms occupy voids in the hydrogen bonded lattice of the host compound when the host is crystallized under a noble gas atmosphere. For example, you take uh, water or polyphenols and crystallize uh, under a positive pressure of noble gases, one can get inclusive compounds or noble gas cloth rates. They are not actually uh, the compounds with a chemical bond. Okay. So, for example, I have shown here uh, xenon forms a cloth rate with water of approximate composition. Uh, x e h 2 o n times that is n equals 5 or 6 which has a melting point of 24 degree centigrade. So, ice containing an encapsulated noble gas atom in a void in the lattice uh, was I have shown here. So, hydrogen atoms of water molecules are omitted for clarity just I have shown here oxygen and you can see here uh, this uh, uh, group 18 element xenon sitting here in the void. So, noble gas halides are quite well known, uh, they are important class of uh, compounds. Fluorine is the most electronegative element and is able to stabilize the highly oxidizing noble gas compounds. Most of them are essentially fluorides. The vast majority of compounds are fluorides of xenon, a few of krypton are also known as I said, though some chemistry of radon is known hampered by its radioactivity and availability in very small or trace amounts. So, noble gases are used as low temperature refrigerants to provide an inert atmosphere and liquid xenon has found applications as an extremely unreactive solvent. Okay. So, let us look into krypton difluoride. Only known halide is krypton difluoride synthesized by passing an electrical discharge through fluorine krypton mixture. Uh, so, uh, krypton difluoride is a very powerful fluorinating agent and is more reactive than xenon difluoride. So, it will oxidize xenon to xenon hexafluoride and also metallic gold to gold hexafluoride anion. For example, 3 KRF2 plus Xc gives x e f 6 plus krypton uh, 7 k r f 2 plus 2 a u gives 2 k 
here you have plus of krypton is in plus and two oxygen state au f6 minus plus 5 krypton you can see here gold is in plus 5 oxidation state now let us look into xenon fluorides a xenon fluoride xcptf6 was the first noble gas compound to be synthesized Okay. By reaction of xenon with strong oxidant such as PTF6 and it was later shown to be probably a mixture of XEF plus and PTF6 minus. So, that is uh, xenon plus PTF6 which was shown as XEF plus and PTF6 minus and also XEF plus and PT2F11 minus. So, uh, xenon forms three neutral fluorides. xenon difluoride, xenon tetrafluoride and xenon hexafluoride. Okay. By the reaction of fluorine and xenon under different reaction conditions, simplest method involves exposing a fluorine xenon mixture in a dry glass bulb to sunlight, colorless crystals of XCF2 are deposited on the walls of the flask. What you can do is you can take a tube like this sealed one containing xenon and F2 shine UV light that is from sun. So, it gives XEF2 in the sides here as white crystals. Okay. The sunlight causes dissociation of the relatively weaker FF bond in F2 to form F atoms which then react with xenon. With larger ratios of fluorine to xenon, higher temperature and higher pressure one can make XeF4 as well as XeF6. If you are curious to know uh, the structure and geometries of uh, xenon uh, fluorides, of course, you can always use. Uh, VSCPR theory very effectively to arrive at the geometry and shapes of uh, xenon fluorides. For example, if you take xenon uh, difluoride, uh, it is linear whereas, the geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Yeah. Basically, we have uh, 8 electrons are coming from this one and 1 each 2 electrons are coming. So, we have 10 electrons by 2 equals steric number is equals 5, 2 bonded pair and 3 lone pair best geometry would be trigonal bipyramidal. Okay. So, similarly one can write for XEF4. So, XEF4 if you take again 8 plus 4 12 electrons are there. If 12 electrons is the steric number that is uh, 2 equals 6 four bonded pairs are there and there have to be two lone pairs and structure has to be octahedral and the shape has to be planar. So, here eight electrons are from xenon plus two electrons are from uh, four electrons are from four fluorine atoms is 12. So, 12 with the the total number of electrons that steric number is 6. So, you have this octahedral geometry and planar shape. Okay. When you consider XEF6, so here 8 plus 6 
because 14 electrons are there, 14 by 2 equals 7 is the steric number. So, here one lone pair is there. So, this one lone pair occupies one of the triangular faces of octahedral. So, that means essentially it becomes a capped octahedral geometry, but here uh, it is delocalizing over the entire um, uh, octahedral geometry. As a result, it appears slightly distorted octahedral structure. So, XCF6 is fractional in the gas phase. So, interchanging between the structures where the lone pair points through the center of any of the triangle as I mentioned. Okay. So, since the lone pair is in a spherically inactive S orbital, what happens? It does not appear like typically a capped octahedral structure, but it appears like a slightly distorted uh, octahedral molecule. Yeah. Of course, I wrote, I am showing you here the structures here, you can see XCF2 and also you can see XCF4 and also you can see XCF6 here. Okay, this lone pair is represented here in this lobe here. So, all of the xenon fluorides are powerful fluorinating agents able to oxidize a wide range of compounds. In many cases, XCF2 is a very selective oxidant able to oxidize the central hetero atom of a main group compound uh, like arsenic, phosphorus and etcetera, but not the organic substituents bonded to it. For example, if methyl or phenyl groups are there they are not getting fluorinated, only the central atom is getting fluorinated. Let me write couple of examples. For example, if I take trimethyl arsine and treat with the XCF2, only here arsine is getting fluorinated to form pentavalent, penta coordinated uh, trimethyl difluoroarsine. Similarly, if uh, diphenylphosphine is treated with uh, xenon difluoride. Again here phosphorus getting fluorinated. So, we get pH 2 P H F 2. So, the plus xenon. So, X C F 2 also oxidizes water to oxygen while X C F 4 can oxidize platinum metal to V T F 4. So, why we say uh, oxidation of uh, oxygen in water because if you just look into water oxygen is in 2 minus state and in when it is uh, decomposed and we get oxygen, oxygen is in 0 valent state essentially it is oxidation, oxidation of oxygen if water is dissociated or broken up. So, here xenon difluoride oxidizes water to oxygen while XCF4 can oxidize even platinum metal to platinum tetrafluoride. Okay. Similarly, if you take XCF4 and treat this one with platinum metal, it is platinum uh, PTF4 with platinum is in plus 4 state plus xenon. Noble gas fluorides can react with fluoride ion donors as well as acceptors and the chemistry is quite extensive. So, noble gas fluorides react with uh, strong fluoride ion acceptors such as uh, group 15 pentafluoro derivatives of arsenic, contimony, bismuth and also tantalum, ruthenium and platinum. Xenon difluoride forms the greatest number of compounds by this type of reaction followed by XCF6 and XCF4 and KRF2 krypton difluoride forms many similar compounds while transferring the fluorides can be fully transferred to the Lewis acid that is MF5 for example, ASF5, SBF5 leaving cation xenon species, but in most cases fluoride is only partially transferred resulting in compounds having X F E bridges. So, fluoride bridges. So, here we have a fluoride bridge. So, that means essentially something like this. 
in all these compounds where there is a partial transfer of fluoride. So, different types of cations and anions are formed depending on the stoichiometry of noble gas fluoride. For example, uh, XeF2 take in solid and treat this one with again fluoride acceptor, it gives XeF plus Yes, F6, okay. This is solid, of course, it is 1 is to 1 ratio, okay. So, what would happen when 1 is to 2 ratio is used? So, uh, we can have more of them. For example, I will write some of the structures here. Yeah. Okay, you can see here partial transferring is there. This is XCF, ESF6 and also uh, so we can also have XC2, F3 cation and similarly we can also have uh, a dimeric species. Yes, B2, F11 anion. Noble gas fluorides can act as fluoride acceptors or donors to give anions or cations I already mentioned. Let me show you a couple of reactions here. For example, XeF4 when it is treated with fluoride ion donors such as cesium fluoride, it forms xenon pentafluoride anion. Uh, similarly, XeF7 minus XeF8 minus are known they are obtained from XeF6 and XeF7 by adding 1 or 2 fluoride ions. The structures I have shown here uh, for XeF, ESF6 and also XE2F3 plus and here uh, this for SB2, F11 anion. So, always whenever these halides are bridging, you should never write in the stride and it should be at an angle. That angle will be much closer to the tetrahedral angle because each bridging, uh, dibridging halide ion has two lone pairs intact on it. For example, in this case you have one lone pair here and one lone pair here. So, xenon oxygen compounds are also quite known. They result from the hydrolysis of the fluorides such as XeF4 and XeF6. For example, let us take uh, xenon tetrafluoride and try to uh, add water uh, to hydrolyze it. Okay. Similarly, if you take HEXEF6 and treat this one with water, it undergoes hydrolysis to form xenon oxide plus 6HF. So, in this, in both, of course, here xenon is in plus 6 oxidation state. Okay. So, XeO3 is a highly explosive white solid soluble in water. Uh, in strong alkaline solution, XeO3 behaves as a weak acid giving xenate 6 anion. So, for example, XeO3 when it is treated with OH minus, it gives xenate anion. So, xenate anion is unstable in aqueous solution and undergoes a disproportionation reaction to give xenon gas and the xenate anion with xenon in plus 8 oxygen state that is XeO64 minus which contain xenon in plus 8 oxygen state. For example, if you take XeO 
O3, OH, and an in aqueous solution. Uh, it forms x e o 6 4 minus plus xenon plus o 2 plus 2 h 2 o. So, here xenon is in it is essentially xenon is in plus 8 oxidation state. The controlled reaction of xenon hexafluoride with water will give xenon oxyfluoride. Now, for example, x c f 6 plus water one equivalent of water gives x c o f 4 plus 2 h f x c f 6 also reacts with sodium nitrate to give xenon oxy fluoride uh, plus n a f plus F n O 2 or reaction of X C F 6 with phosphorus oxyfluoride gives X C O F 4 plus P F 5 phosphorus is getting reduced. The reaction of X C F 6 with N A 4 X C O 6 gives the oxyfluoride X C O F 4 and X C O 3 F 2 and also X C O 2 F 2. So, that means using one of these methods uh, one can also prepare uh, X C O 3 F 2 and X C O 2 F 2. It is very interesting to look into the structures and geometries and shapes of these molecules. You can try these things at home. So, other xenon oxygen compounds can be formed from xenon fluoride, uh, xenon tetrafluoride or xenon hexafluoride by substitution of one or more fluorides by reaction of strong oxy acids such as uh, uh, triflic acid, uh, trifluoromethane sulfonic acid uh, with the elimination of HF. One example I will show you. So, for example, F, X, C, F with X, O, H gives F x c o h okay, uh, plus h f. Okay. So, of course, this can also give okay, x o x e o x uh, plus h f. Alternately, fluoride exchange yields analogous products. So, let me uh, give you a couple of more uh, reactions here. Mm, for example, x c F6 plus this boron compound O T E F5 thrice gives O T E F5 6 primes plus 2 B F3. So, the compounds have similar shapes to the fluorides. For example, uh, if you consider this X O x e o x. So, this is very similar to x e f 2 having linear geometry. Okay. Xenon and krypton compounds with bonds to elements other than 1 f are also known. For example, x e f 2 uh, when it is treated with uh, c 6 e f 5 3 it gives c 6 e f 5 xenon plus C 6 F 5 B F 3 minus plus C R F 5 C 6 F 5 X E and C 6 F 5 twice B F 2 minus. So, that means alkanyl species of the type also known okay, where R can be a range of non fluorinated groups such as where R can be where ethyl group or 
SI, ME3 group, okay, extensive organic chemistry is avoided uh, okay, with uh, this kind of compounds. So, uh, you can see here in this slide how this uh, compound reacts with chloride to form a neutral compound and also one can also see the formation of xenon to carbon bond here in this one pentafluorophenyl derivative. Okay, so, let me talk about the uses of noble gas elements before I summarize. Helium is used as an inert gas and as light source in lasers and electric discharge lamps. Liquid helium is a very low temperature refrigerant. Being very light and non-flammable, helium is used to inflate the tires of large aircraft and in balloons including weather balloons. Liquid helium is an important coolant and is used in high field NMR spectrometer. Argon is also used in laboratory in at atmosphere uh, or dry boxes for handling air sensitive compounds. Neon, krypton and xenon are also used in electric discharge signs. So, let me summarize the overall chemistry of uh, group 18 elements. Only xenon shows extensive chemistry and forms compounds such as xenon difluoride tetrafluoride and hexafluoride. Xenon fluorides act as fluorinating agent react with both donor and acceptors. Xenon compounds undergo hydrolysis reactions to form oxyfluorides. Uh, compounds containing bonds from xenon to fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine and also carbon are well characterized. Few compounds of krypton and radon in their plus 2 oxygen states are also known. Compounds are Krypton are much more reactive than xenon. So, with this I conclude uh, the chemistry of group 18 elements. Uh, in my next lecture I will be discussing about the chemistry of group 12 elements that is zinc, cadmium and mercury and proceed to the organometallic chemistry of main group elements. Uh, until then have a present reading of the chemistry of main group elements. Thank you very much.